The life circumstances that cause people to become homeless are diverse and complex. Until you've walked a mile in someone's shoes, it's impossible to understand why anyone would make such a tough choice. But when someone does live on the street, how do we do right by them? Clem Awesa investigates how the city of Cape Town has handled the challenge of soaring homelessness amid the pandemic that has made rate-paying residents see red. Cape Town's homelessness is a controversial issue, with shelters springing up between highways and in public spaces. When UCT and Table Mountain were set ablaze from an unattended cooking fire, it released toxic vitriol on social media from the public towards the homeless. Cities around the world are dealing with the extremely complex issue of people who find themselves homeless, and the impact of COVID has put many more on the streets. Cape Town is no different, with 14,500 people living rough and shelter for only 2,500. These startling statistics were revealed in a U-turn Homeless Ministries report on the cost of homelessness in Cape Town co-authored by COO John Hopkins and two other organizations. He says we are reacting to the problem rather than solving it. In South Africa, all cities are doing something a bit different. And Cape Town has budget um, towards homelessness. The other cities, Swanee, have a lovely policy, but no budget. Johannesburg doesn't have a budget. Durban has no budget. And most of the support for the homeless is coming out of the pockets of Cape Townians. But is it changing the situation? 50% of the people who are homeless have been so for over eight years, and they have mental, physical, and substance abuse problems. And the common narrative is that people are choosing to live on the streets. Use the toilets on the beachfront. 3% of those that we asked said, no, I choose to be on the street. Some other people said, no, it's choice, but also I faced abuse at home or my house had 37 people living in it and there was just no space. I was sleeping in the backyard. Actually, the street was a better life. I'm choosing to be here because at least then I feel like I'm in control of the situation. Anda Mazantzana is a classic example. He started living on the streets when he left a children's home, surviving as a parking attendant on Tafelberg Road for the last eight years. It's people's disdain that hurts him the most. You are seen as a sort of an animal because you are seen different from the next person. You are looked at as trash. You are like a nobody, you don't exist. It was major depression that drove Karen Helderbloom out onto the streets. I had a comfortable life. I, was, um, I am a qualified hairstylist. What happened was my husband passed away suddenly. I was just very depressed. I just isolated myself from the world. She stayed in a shelter for a couple of months until she was forced to move on. Karen lived here in a drain pipe in the company gardens. The nine, almost 10 years that I was on the street, I never sat once on a bench and begged. I would go at night when the traders are busy packing up their stuff on Green Market Square. Then I would pick up the beads that they dropped and then I would make bracelets or whatever. Since lockdown, settlements have sprung up everywhere as people are no longer hiding themselves and removing their structures before the city confiscates them. But ratepayers are irate, complaining about antisocial behavior and that their property is devaluing. Part of the problem is that a high percentage of homeless people have major mental illnesses and aren't getting help. One of the biggest problems for the homeless and the public is that access to toilets is limited, so human waste on the streets becomes a problem. Here in Observatory, they've provided these ablution facilities that have reduced the problem by 75%. In Observatory, there are 80 homeless residents, and the opposite treads a fine line between angry business owners and those who believe the homeless have a right to be there. Amanda Kirk says there is no silver bullet, but they have work programs, health support, and a sponsored house. Somebody is always angry with us. So what we try to do is we try to say, people are going to be living on the streets. We're going to try and minimize their impact on the public space. And the toilets is a perfect example of that. The second thing we do is that once the business is closed at night, they'll go and sleep in doorways. Our public safety team goes out every morning and we will ask people to move. Then our work-based rehab team, they come and do a daily cleanup of this general litter that is generated by people living on the streets. What strikes you the most when you engage with people who find themselves homeless is the level of violence that they have to endure. 
Carlos Mesquita became homeless six years ago when his drug problem destroyed his music career. He had won several Sama awards and traveled the world before he learned to scavenge from bins for goods to sell. I became the first homeless person to ever get a stand on the parade. But they came and they started throwing all my stuff onto their truck. They just took the tent with everything that was in it. And I'm trying to grab it and as I grab it they threw me onto the floor and one CCID and one law enforcement did this to my eyes and each of them sprayed the canister of pepper spray in my eyes. Believe me that you can't play a charge. You can't, but nobody's going to follow it up and nobody's even going to take that charge. Even if you go two steps with a complaint, they would ask, but why are you sleeping outside? When Ramizos, my partner was stabbed, it's drunk school children. They were throwing boulders on our tents. They were kicking people off the benches. They were eating people with uh, buckles in their faces. Driven out of the company gardens, she paid the security to sleep at the reservoir in Oranjezicht. Law enforcement came and they took my stuff. What did they take? Oh, everything I, I owned at that time. Your my position? jewelry, that I make, my ID, my bank card, my bottom dentures. Karen became the face of the homeless when, along with seven others, she took on the city's bylaws after she was fined 500 rand for littering and dumping at 3 a.m. when she was sleeping in this park. They want to fine us. Where are we going to get money? We what they want us to become criminals to get the money so that we stay at the jail. They won an interim protection order in 2019, but now Ndifunukwazi Law Center has escalated it to the Western Cape High Court and the Equality Court. They're challenging the constitutionality and discriminatory impact of two of the bylaws, says John T. Cogger. It's never justified to criminalize homelessness. It's, uh, homeless people are already a vulnerable members of community. Criminalization perpetuates their systemic disadvantage. It violates their right to property, freedom of movement. The city has responded by sending out a questionnaire requesting residents to lodge their complaints against the homeless and are looking at extending the powers of law enforcement to arrest and remove people. Councillor Zahid Badruddin of Community Services and Health jointly sent out the questionnaire with law enforcement. It gets to a point where it's very clear that a homeless person will continue to refuse um, assistance from the city of Cape Town. And the city then also has a responsibility to enforce its bylaws that are able to keep our public spaces clean and free of obstruction for the benefit of all Cape Townians. Let's stop passing the problem round. Where are you clearing them to? Someone else's neighbourhood to make it someone else's problem. Is fines the way to go? Fines are always the very last resort. But an additional program that the city of Cape Town is investing in is what we're calling the restoration program, where we're able to work with a homeless person that has been identified uh, at the risk of potentially being fined to get them into a program and hopefully services before they even get to the court. 45% of the 744 million rand that's spent on the homeless is spent chasing them away, arresting them and putting them in prison. And only 16% of that money is used on long-term solutions. Like Carlos, who spent six months awaiting trial in prison for having a trolley, despite being in possession of a letter from the chain store. The current response is not working, it's broken. We need to push for one that does work using programs that do work and use that rehabilitative, longer-term process that actually ultimately is more cost-effective. Rehabilitating people takes at least 18 months, but then there is an 80% chance that they won't return to the streets. Currently, a person is on the street for eight and a half years, costing an average of 455,000 rand compared to the 120,000 rand for a rehab program. And a critical part of this is appropriate accommodation. Once you have a roof over your head, you are able to think straight. And companies that are hiring, they look at you differently rather than from a person that will wash from the mountain and then try to go and get jobs. For me, I'm confident about it. Anda, Carlos and Karen's lives have changed dramatically in the last nine months when they were provided with sponsored accommodation along with 28 others. Anda has got a part-time job and is rewriting his matric. 87% of the residents have found work and Karen runs a jewelry store. But the funding for the accommodation has run out, so Carlos has founded an NPO called the Rehousing Collective, providing an alternative housing model and is fighting desperately to stop 31 people returning to the street or the shelters. I'm the very first person to say to you, 
that people will refuse to get into shelters. And then people get very upset, but why? How can they refuse it? Because if you haven't been in a shelter, don't ask me that question. Shelters only provide a bed for three months. After that, they lose their funding from the province. They don't accept families, couples are separated, and anyone who is still struggling with substance issues won't get shelter. The city has two safe spaces, but their policies are the same, and they have only recently been upgraded to include showers. Now to go back to square one again, it will be a disaster, because that's a promise that I made to myself once I went out of the streets, that I will never want to see that life again.